Alright, this is John Colo with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing the all new Nutribullet Juicer. Yes, Nutribullet has a juicer. You may be familiar with the Nutribullet company because they have basically gotten so popular because of their very popular Nutribullet blender. Now, you may think a blender. Why do you need a juicer, John, if you got a Nutribullet blender? Blending and juicing are not the same thing. When you blend, you keep all the insoluble and soluble fiber in the blender, but when you juice, you remove some, but not all the fiber. It is a common misnomer that, you, oh man, you're juicing, you're removing all the fiber. There are many kinds of fiber. The two main types that are identified are soluble and insoluble fiber. In the blender, you keep all the fiber because what you put in is what you get out. And in the juicer, it separates out the juice from the fiber that feeds you. Now it separates out the insoluble fiber because the soluble fiber what does soluble mean? It means dissolves in water. The soluble fiber will still be in your juice no matter what juicer you use. Now some juices will put more insoluble fiber in the juice uh, you know when you create it. So I don't want you guys to be confused. I'm not reviewing a Nutribullet blender in this episode. I'm reviewing the Nutribullet juicer. Now I will say the Nutribullet Blender was very popular due to an infomercial that came out that was rerun for many, many, many years, and then it got people onto juicing and making healthy lifestyle changes. I'm in complete agreement with making healthy lifestyle changes by incorporating more fruits and vegetables, whether you're using a Nutribullet blender or the juicer. I will personally say that the Nutribullet blender, for being a small personal style blender, is probably one of my favorite personal blenders out there although it doesn't have a vacuum feature on it. So be sure to look up my Nutribullet blender hack for how to convert your Nutribullet into a vacuum blender. So enough about the blenders today because we're gonna focus on their brand new juicer that just came out. So I happen to have the Nutribullet juicer, the standard model, which is 800 watts. If you wanna get their pro model, they have a Nutribullet pro juicer, it's a thousand watts, so it's 200 more watts, but pretty much works the same. There's a few minor variances, like the catch cup is a bit larger or whatnot. But for all practical purposes, the machines are the same. I think the, the Pro model has a few different settings, but the results will be the same, and the juicer is exactly the same style juicer. Uh, this style juicer is known as a centrifugal uh, ejection juicer, but this is a centrifugal ejection, non-ejection juicer. They had original centrifugal juicers, that did not eject the pulp. This was known as the Acme or the Olympic uh, or the Omega 1000 that literally spun the produce around inside the juicer to get further extraction to get the pulp really dry. This is not that style machine because this actually kicks out the pulp and it does not continually spin it but it does not eject it either. So I'm not a fan of this style machine right off the bat because it is not a continual use juicer this means you can only use it for so long and then you must stop, clean out the juicer before you can juice more. According to the box here, it says you can juice about, I think it's about uh, 13 apples that weigh about 100 grams each. So that's basically 1,300 grams of produce, which works out to be about 2.8 pounds of produce. So you can only juice that much max and then you have to stop, clean out the whole machine and then you can juice more if you want to. I personally prefer the continual extraction juicers they just go on and on and on until you're, you meet the juicer usage time or you've juiced as much as you want because you don't have to stop and clean out the juicer in the middle of your juicing process. So this is the box that's going to come in. I've already taken it out of the box and cleaned it all up and you can see the juicer right behind me right there. And this is the juicer. It's a very simple machine. Now this is a centrifugal ejection, non-ejection juicer. Uh, there's only like one other kind like this. There's like a, an inexpensive Breville model. I think it's a BJ200 model. And uh, this is how it comes. It's all self-contained. There's no catch bin for the pulp, which is a good thing. There is a catch cup for the juice, which you will probably want to use because basically the way this machine works, it runs around through a centrifugal force. So you put the produce in there, it basically grinds it up, it shaves it up into little um, fine particles, and as it's shaving it up, the juice is released, and the juice is then spun out, and it spins into this catch cup at great force with some air being injected in the juice, which oxidizes the juice. I have not found these style juicers to heat the juice. 
and then the pulp is kicked out into this outer ring area. I'll go ahead and take this apart so you guys can see. Now, the, the one benefit of this machine is that it is fast. This has a wide three inch feed sheet, so very minimal uh, cutting is required to put like large apples in there, for example. So you basically push the produce in here. The produce then comes and hits this uh, grinding blade that is really sharp, so you don't want to put your fingers on this. You'll probably cut your fingers up if you were really wanting to, because uh, it's kind of like razor blade sharp. So what happens is you put the produce in, it basically gets micro shred, and the micro shreds are then kicked out into this outer ring here. So this outer ring will fill with the pulp, and then the inner ring is where the juice comes, and then the juice gets flung out in here at great force, and the air literally pushes the juice out of the spout here, which actually this has a nice... Uh, spout cap so you don't have any drips, drips when you're done, which I do like. But the main limitation on this compared to a centrifugal ejection juicer is that on an ejection juicer, the ejected pulp is usually put into a pulp catch bin, so then that is more a continuous juicer, so you can just keep juicing and juicing and juicing. The challenge with this machine is that once this ring fills up, you got to basically stop. So I'm not a super huge fan. In addition, you know, people think juicers are juicers are juicers. All juicers will separate out the, you know, the juice from the fiber, or the specifically insoluble fiber, um, but there's many different types of juicers, much like you have many different pairs of shoes, like a pair of high-heeled shoes might be great for going to a wedding, but a pair of high-heeled shoes, if you're a lady or a guy that likes to wear high-heeled shoes, um, going to the beach would not be a good thing because the, the heel would literally sink into the beach and you'd probably trip and fall, right? Likewise, you wouldn't want to go to your wedding with flip-flops on because everybody's going to look at you funny and think you're weird. No, I might do that, but you guys wouldn't want to do that. And likewise, juicers, while they do all separate out the pulp, they work in a variety of different methods, right? This is a centrifugal juicer, and, you know, to be honest with you, I am not a fan of centrifugal juicers. I was a fan of these juicers back in the 1990s when they didn't really have a whole lot of different juicing technology. And it, it was a better style, but now, due to the advent of the slow juicers, you know, uh, juicing technology has gotten much, much, much better, and so I'm not a big fan of these. So I will say from the get-go, I am biased. I do not like these style juicers. <laughs> they do have their pros and cons. The pros are they are fast, and that's a good thing because you can be done really quick. The con is it oxidizes the nutrients, and you will have less of the beneficial um, antioxidants and polyphenols and different um, properties of the skin and the seeds that these style machines can kind of kick out without crushing, squeezing, and extracting the seeds of them. They did a study actually where they did grapes in a high speed machine versus a low speed crushing style machine that actually they found that the, the mice where they're doing animal testing, which I do not agree with, got the benefits from the juice made in a slow juicer that was able to extract more nutrients from the seeds and the peel of the fruit, whereas the high-speed machine simply was not. So here's the thing, you might think I'm going to do a review on only this juicer today, but you know, when you don't have something to compare it with, then you don't know if it's really good or bad. So, you know, a lot of juicer reviews are just a singular review with only showing the juicer they're reviewing, but not comparing it to anything else. So that's how we really could differentiate if something is good or not. If you compare a Ferrari to a Volkswagen Beetle and you want to know the fastest one, right? Well, clearly the Ferrari is going to be faster than the Volkswagen Beetle, um, you know. So it's only when you have a comparison you can see the differences. Like if you're comparing two guys that you like going out over two girls you like, you can see, oh, I like that one better than this one for this reason or that reason. And juicers are like that too. So let me go ahead and get out another juicer today that we'll be comparing the uh, Nutra Bullet juicer to. And we're going to compare this to a similar juicer in terms of price, but not in operation, right? This is known as the Shine Juicer, and this is competitively priced about the same price as the Nutribullet Pro Juicer model, their high-end machine that's a uh, 1,000 watts. This machine actually is only 150 watts. Now, don't think, oh, it's only 150 watts. It's not as powerful. Well, here's the thing. When you're using a different extraction method, you don't need the high wattage. Actually, on a recent video, actually the last video, I'll post down a link below, I took this juicer and I was juicing with it on the top of a mountain when I, after I was hiking using a portable power pack. Now the same portable power pack I used that worked easily on this juicer that did not even make the power pack move from 100% down after using this for a little bit, 
this machine would not even operate with that power pack because this is 800 watts. It pulls more power than the power pack can provide. So once again, you know, if you're living off the grid, solar panels, then guess what? You want a lower wattage juicer instead of a higher wattage juicer, right? Now, some of the pros and cons of each machine is this machine has a much smaller feed chute, whereas this machine has a much larger feed chute. So that means you it will take some more time to cut the produce up to put it in the machine when you're juicing. So time savings, you know, if you're looking for time savings, you want to get this machine. But moving on, we can see this machine, how this machine works is that there are no fast spinning blades. So if you guys are noise sensitive, right, which one of these machines is better for noise sensitive people? Well, this machine, because it runs at a low and slow under 100 RPMs, where this one, I don't know the RPMs because a Nutra bullet does not disclose the RPMs of this, but in general, juicers like this with that are two speeds run between 6,500 and 13,000 RPMs. The, the higher the RPMs, the louder it's going to be. You know, that means if you're juicing at 6 a.m. in the morning, you got kids asleep or your family's asleep, you're going to wake them up with a loud juicer. Not so with this machine. It's, it's quiet, so you're not going to wake up your roommates. Uh, furthermore, this works on a different extraction process. So I showed you guys previously that this has these little grates that you could cut your fingers with. This is not good if you're you know, maybe not careful when you're cleaning it. If you're using a sponge, it'll rip up your sponge literally. I do recommend using the included cleaning brush to clean out the uh, juicing screen. Uh, all the holes of the screen should be brushed actually after each use. Instead of having the grates that basically grind up the produce and shred it up, the way this machine works is you put the produce in here and it has a slow running auger that runs at a slow RPM. So this does not do the level of oxidative damage due to all the air infiltration into juice. It literally crushes and squeezes out the produce as you put it in. So in general, these style machines are much more efficient on juicing things like leafy greens, right? Also, they're a little bit more efficient when juicing fruits compared to this style machine that generally leaves a higher and a wetter pulp, although this style machine generally will handle uh, fruits that are overripe or softer better than this style machine, but then it puts out a really wet pulp. Now on carrots, I will tell you guys, um, you know, on carrots, the high speed machine, greater style machine will make a higher yield, but it's not higher quality juice because you are going to lose nutrients in my personal opinion. So how this machine is basically works by crushing, and as it's crushing, it's in this uh, this juicing screen here, and the juice is literally pressed out between the holes. So I would consider this style machine, the Shine Juicer, a cold press juicer, where I would not consider this a cold press juicer because it's literally not pressing. It's grinding and blowing out the juice, and that's doing going to do oxidative damage. And normally, when people think of cold press juice, they think something of of a quality juice of a higher quality. And then uh, once the uh, produce is ground up, then what happens on this machine is that there's uh, two little ports. There's a you know juice port that the juice flows out of this. Once again, this has that little um, port so you could close it off so that you won't get drips on your counter. And then there's a little uh, flap here on the bottom that keeps a little bit of back pressure on the pulp before it is released. And the, dry, the drier pulp comes out of this little port right here. So uh, to me, this is a much more efficient design, slower running. And also, this machine is more compact. I mean, this machine is a beast, man. It is nice, fat, and wide, and uh, you know, and fairly tall. I mean, it is easy to assemble. You're just going to put this on, put it down in place. You're going to put this on, and if this machine is not properly assembled with this latch arm up, um, then it will not turn on. Likewise, if this machine is not properly assembled, it will not turn on either. All right, so to assemble this machine, you're gonna look for the little drop down piece here. That's a locking mechanism and drop it into the back here, which is right near the handle. And then it basically should uh, just drop in and uh, lock into place. And then you're just gonna go ahead and take this auger, drop the auger in place, drop that down, spit it in place. And then you're gonna take the top. There's a little dot on the top here. And you gotta take the dot to the uh, side over here where it says open. And then you're just gonna close it to the lock position. And then you could turn the machine on and you are all ready to So if we turn this machine on, you could hear it's running low and slow. It's fairly quiet. You really cannot hear it like running that bad because it's really soft. We're now going to go ahead and flip on the Nutribullet juicer. We're going to crank it up to the high speed. 
Yeah, yeah that's significantly louder. You gotta like put your fingers in your ears because it's so loud. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. All right, so the next thing I wanna do for you guys in this video is we're gonna go ahead and do an actual juice off comparison. We're gonna go ahead and juice even amounts of pears and a lemon, which I call this pear aid. It's kind of like lemonade, but the pear gives like a sweetness and the lemon gives that kind of hint of lemon. Also, the lemon acts as that antioxidants for the juice so that it does not turn brown as quickly because juices like apples and pears can turn brown quickly due to oxidative damage after the cell walls have been ruptured. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and do a weigh-in to make sure we have a fair fight. All right, so now we're all ready and set up to juice, and now we're going to go ahead and do a close-up on the scales to make sure we have a fair fight. Now we're going to go ahead and do a weigh-in. We got basically red pears and a lemon. Over on the neutral bullet side, we got one, four, four, four on the weight. And over on the shine juicer side, same pears, same lemon. And we got one, four, four, four. Or one, four, four, four. So you guys can see on the scales, one, four, four, four on both scales. So confirmed, we have a fair fight. Now we're gonna do the juice off today and I have my nephew here, Nico, who's gonna help me out. He's gonna juice in the Nutribullet at the same exact time I'm juicing in the Shine Juicer. Normally I would do one juicer and then the other, but because my nephew Nico's here, he's gonna juice in the Nutribullet. Now I do not encourage you guys to let kids juice alone. Uh, this machine, especially with a wide three inch feed chute and a fast spinning blade, a child could easily stick their hand in there and really grate their hand off. Don't do that, Nico. That's not safe. But luckily, you know, if you have kids, it would be safe for them to use this style machine because try to get your hand down that, Nico. Try as he might, he cannot get his hand in there. So this would be that. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> it's not stuck. All right, so yeah, this would be a much safer juicer if you have kids, a slow juicer that has a smaller feed chute, okay? So anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and remove these scales, take them out of the way. We're gonna put this fruit back here for Nico so you could grab that easily. And I'm gonna just go ahead and put this right here to the side. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna go ahead and hit start on the stopwatch and then he's gonna start juicing and I'm gonna start juicing. Now he'll just be able to take the fruit alone and put it in the machine whole because that has such a wide feed chute. Me, on the other hand, because this is a slow juicer, has a smaller feed chute, I'm gonna have to actually sit here and cut up each fruit, but we will incorporate that into the juicing time so you can see the time difference that's gonna elapse for juicing in the fast way versus the slow way. Plus we have the exact same measuring cup, so you'll see what juicer made more juice in the end. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and taste test each juice, and we're gonna let you guys know our opinions of how each juice tastes. All right, Nico, are you ready? Yeah. All right, go. Alright Nico, what was the time? 35.5 Alright, turn it off. 35.5 <laughs> for Nico and the fast juicer. Meanwhile, I'm still juicing. I've only juiced like two pairs, so now he gets to wait for me while I juice the rest. Come on Uncle John, hurry up! <laughs> You're so slow! Nico, this is a slow juicer and I like slow juicers better because look at all the foam in that juice! Oh my gosh, that's totally insane! There's no foam in this juice, man. It's a lot lot lower and slower RPM. Won't it take you like an hour? No, it's not gonna take an hour, but it will take more time than of course, you know, that machine there. But you know, then again, it depends on what you're juicing, right? If you're juicing something like, you know, leafy greens, you're basically gonna waste the leafy greens in that, hot, that fast machine, because it's not gonna get a lot of juice out of it. Whereas this machine will yield a lot more. So this one runs at a low and slow, and we're gonna see how this makes a difference when you juice. In general, that machine puts a lot of air into the juice, so it's making the juice more bubbly, more frothy, 
and it also may give you more gas, belching, and bloating, uh, you know, when you're done juicing it because you're literally consuming a lot of air uh, with it. So yeah, this goes relatively quickly. Just gotta cut up all the pieces, and sometimes I like to pre-cut everything before I'm ready to juice. But I want to show you guys a fair comparison on juicing the same exact ingredients and how much longer extra it will take on this style machine with the smaller feed chute. Now we do have three inch wide feed chute slow juicers, which also have their pros and cons, which I would not have to be cutting all the pairs up, which likely would have finished by now. <laughs> Put a link down below to the Coolings juicer and how to use that should you want uh, to purchase a slow juicer with a wider feed chute. Now keep in mind those are more expensive. All right, all right, so I have uh, two more pairs to go, and it looks like um, we're taking a little bit more time. For me personally, I, I, you know, I don't really care if it takes a little bit more time. For me, the quality is the most important factor when juicing, especially I know a lot of people get into juicing before their health. Uncle John, you got three minutes. All right, well, that's all right, whatever it is. Hello, Uncle John. That was 35 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, things that are low and slow are better than things that are fast, right? No. Not all the time. Well, not all the time, but sometimes. Who won the race, the tortoise or the hare? The tortoise, the slow one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this juicer is going to win the race in terms of nutrition and likely even yield. what if, what if you're in the morning you're like want to go to like when you, you have to go to school and you're like in a rush? Well, if you want to do the thing that takes four minutes, I think that takes 35 seconds. Well, then you have to wake up four minutes earlier in the morning to get a better quality juice. Now here's the other thing, right? The juice made in a slow juicer will store, they say you can store it up to three days, whereas I would not be storing that juice. I mean, geez, I don't know if you guys could tell, but just in the time it was made, this juice is already starting to turn, like, you know, color, like a lot more brown. It's a lot more frothy. Oh my God, it's totally insane how frothy that is. Do I want to trade juices? No, I don't want to trade juices. This juice is going to be so much better, but we'll leave that for you to decide once you taste it, and then you'll see if you, should, if you like this juice, or that juice. To me, it's not worth the time savings to give up nutrient quality, especially if you have a health opportunity to work with. You wanna maximize your phytonutrients, in my opinion, and based on some science I've seen, this machine will help you do that because it better extracts some of the nutrients out of the produce than that style machine does. All right, Nico, so we got two glasses here. And in a second, when this, okay, I think we're pretty much done. So what is the time elapsed so far? Wow, that took four minutes and 50 seconds approximately to juice in this machine. And how long did it take you? 35. 35 seconds. So wow, we could say like this took like four minutes more basically to juice. But let's go ahead and do a concise look at the difference. So when you're always done juicing, I like to tip this down to pour all that extra juice out. Then we're gonna put the spout cap down. We're gonna move this up front and center for you guys and we're gonna go ahead and close the spout cap on this juicer. And we're gonna move this up front and center for you guys and I want you guys to see the exact comparison of the juices. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys the juices that were created. So over on the Nutribullet side, you're like, man, that made a lot of juice, John. It made like a little bit over a quart and if we go over to the Shine, it also made a little bit over a quart. So it's like, wow, these juicers made the exact same amount of juice, but that one, the Shine, took four minutes longer than the Nutribullet. Why would you want to do that? Well, it will be evident when we look close up at the juices. So if you guys look closely at the juices on the Nutribullet, I mean, down here, this looks like juice to me. Up here, this just looks like a lot of froth, like a lot of bubbles in air. And if we look at the top, I mean, Look at all the bubbles on there. That's really frothy on there. And if we look over on the shine, to me, I basically just see clear juice. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of bubbles and they're white because they have not oxidized, whereas the bubbles on this side are brown on the neutral because they are highly oxidized. You know, the consistency of this juice is a lot deeper, richer color to me, and you don't see all the air bubbles in there. To me, this is like more like air bubble. I mean, look, the juice there is basically white. It's really interesting the way it laid down in the in the 
container there. We got like decent juice over here, but then this is all froth. Like it's just full of air bubbles. If we spin this around, I mean, it's pretty evident to me when we spin this around the other direction. I mean, once again, look at that. Oh, and if you look closely, this is really cool. I don't know if you guys could see that, but like, if you look closely, I'm seeing red pigments in this juice because that's actually the skin particulate that actually made it into the juice. And I see none of the skin particulate in this. So that means the skin particulate, there's a lots of nutrients in the skin of different fruits and vegetables. So once again, at the bottom of this, we see like a layer of juice, but the rest, to me, this is like a lot of foam. So let's go, even though the yield was pretty much identical. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and compare the pulp for you guys. So this is the pulp. It's like nice and condensed on the um, shine juicer. And if I put a handful of this in my hand and squeeze it out, you guys can see I'm basically just squeezing all the pulp through my fingers and there's very little juice that like gets wrung through my fingers, right? Meanwhile, we're gonna go ahead and open this juicer up. And I mean, oh! <laughs> if we pull this juicer out, right? Look what we're gonna find. Oh my gosh, there's big, huge pieces of apples that literally, I mean, there's a piece there. Here's a piece here. It literally just did not get juiced. It kicked out. Oh my God, look at this lemon. This lemon, you can see, I mean, oh my gosh, I could squeeze this lemon and look, there's still juice in there. That's insane. This juicer's wasting so much. Meanwhile, if we look at this pulp here, you cannot see any pieces of lemon. You cannot see any piece of apple. Hey Nico, what does the pulp taste like? Do you like the pulp? Does it taste good? Yeah, I love pulp. You could probably like put some cinnamon in the pulp and maybe put some dates in there probably tastes pretty good. So yeah, so the, the pulp was significantly drier in my opinion. In I like the shine. That pulp. That one well yeah, because this is a more wet pulp, right? <laughs> we could take some of this pulp in my hand and let's uh, let's go ahead and try to squeeze this out. Wow, a lot more pulp. I would say I'm not squeezing any liquid. My hand is a lot more wet. So in a minute what I'm going to try to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and rejuice this pulp through the shine to see if we get actually more juice. So we're going to go ahead and set all this to the side and uh, do that in a minute. Wow, this gets quite messy. I really don't like how the pulp just basically goes everywhere in here. With this machine, the pulp is nice, compact, and more neat and easy uh, to deal with when you're done juicing. All right. So Nico, now we're going to go ahead and taste test the juice. Which juice do you want to taste test first? Uh, Why don't we taste test the one you made first? Okay, all right. Uh, uh. So we're going to go ahead and pour this out. So look when I pour this. It's like really frothy, so we're gonna. I mean, it looks good. We're gonna drink that much, and we're gonna drink this much, but yeah, there's. This is pretty frothy to me. Those look bad for me. All right, so here to your help. <laughs> oh, and I want you guys to look at the color of this, right? Mmm, it tastes really good. Mmm. Mmm. To me, I taste a lot of air. Do you taste air? No, I like it. It tastes oh, like, like cotton it? candy. Ah, cotton candy, like nice and fluffy. Mm. It's healthy cotton candy. Wow. To me, that's a really aerated juice. Like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan. I mean, it does taste good, for sure. I definitely, like it. Be, definitely better than what your dad buys you. <laughs> what did your dad buy you again? Gatorade. Gatorade! Yeah. Sun, Fresh Powerade. juice is better. All right, so you drink all that juice, nigga? Mm -hmm. That juice even has a tinge of bitterness to me, and in my opinion, the bitterness is the oxidative aspect of the juice because it was blown out at high speed. I'm probably going to guess it was like at about 13,000 RPMs. So look at the color of this juice, right? It's not quite as brown, has a lot more decent color. What do you think about this juice, Nico? Um, you can taste the flavor better, mm. but... Oh yeah, I really taste the lemon in there. Yeah, you can really taste it, but it's like sour. Oh yeah, well the lemon makes it sour. So here's the thing. Your juicer probably didn't get a lot of the lemon juice or the peel in, into the juice. I would recommend juice. this one because it's less sour. All right, well if you want a sweeter juice, you want that. But to me, I prefer this juice because I'm tasting the lemon. Lots of bioflavonoids, hesperidin, rutin in the lemon peel. Also, this is like, are you tasting, is it frothy yeah, like cotton like candy? that one because of the pear. You, you taste the pear yeah, better in this really one? Yeah, you To me, this juice is a lot more rich and thick and a lot more tasty. Like, I prefer to drink in this. This looks a lot more brown 
separated and oxidized where this is basically staying totally like congealed. I mean, maybe for you, Nico, you'd like a little bit of this with a little bit of this mixed together. You want to try them both mm -hmm. at the same time? Yeah. Alright, so try that. The best of both worlds for Nico. Mm -hmm. Is that the best or which mm -hmm. one did you like the best? best? So you like them one of each. Mm -hmm. So you like maybe because this one's this one is strong lemony. I, per, I like the lemon but you don't like the lemon and this one tends to be sweeter because it didn't extract the nutrients from the lemon obviously because <laughs> here's a this is basically the lemon that basically got juiced it really didn't get juiced it got very little juice from the lemon oh my gosh and look and here's big apple pieces or I'm sorry the pear pieces that seriously just did not get juiced so in the end Nico which juicer did you prefer the best uh, all else one. being equal why because it just tasted better tasted better in the end yeah, even though I, 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 I like that one, I, I, I like that one better. Because it tasted better? You no. had more nutrition or what? No, because you can really taste the flavor. So say if you made watermelon juice, you could oh, really yeah. taste the watermelon instead of just like, like it would be, it kind of be gross if it was in that one. Exactly, yeah. Gross. So I've done taste tests where I use a slow juicer versus a fast juicer actually with watermelon. And I ask everybody to hold it there and which one did you like better? Everybody always says a slow juicer. Why? Because exactly what Nico said, you're a very perceptive 11 year old because you could taste the flavors better. And here's the thing. What are flavors? Flavors equate to phytonutrients. That's a big heavy word, but phytonutrients are basically nutrients in the food. So those are the different flavonoids and antioxidants that you're tasting when you're tasting the flavor. And if you're just drinking a juice with no flavor, yes, it's absolutely better than a Gatorade, a Powerade, a soda or anything like that but it's much better to have a juice that actually you have the flavors because those are the nutrients showing you and proving to you that the juice is in fact more nutritious in the end because you have the flavors and because you have the flavors, you are likely more likely to drink it. All right, so the final thing I wanna do in this episode is actually we're gonna go ahead and try to rejuice the pulp in the shine juicer. Now, the pulp does not always rejuice. You could try to rejuice the pulp in this machine. You're not gonna get a lot more juice because uh, you know the slow juicers generally you could rejuice the pulp although some juicers may clog up when trying to rejuice pulp so we're going to actually see how the shine does uh, with rejuicing the pulp now the other thing I want to say is that you know this machine will not make any kind of smoothies it's only good for juicing um, whereas this machine you can juice in it as well as make nut milks and I know nut milks are getting quite popular these days and I actually have a video making nut milk in the shine juicer so we're going to go ahead and turn that machine on and we're just going to go ahead and take this pulp out and just drop it in the machine and we're going to see if the shine is able to extract more juice literally out of the pulp that we created in the high speed um, nutra bullet juicer this pulp is rather wet Look at that, big pieces, man. All right, so we got all the pulp put in the juicer. The slow juicer does take some time to work. You guys can see the pulp is coming out and it's a lot more ground up and congealed and uh, even a little bit drier than it was it was formerly. And now we are making a very thick juice um, because we are juicing the pulp, rejuicing the pulp, so it's a lot thicker than it would have been the first time through. And we put that last piece of peel in there that's going to maybe hopefully help push everything through. Oh my god, and look at this. There's a lot of juice in here that's just, uh, this is really thick juice uh, coming through the juicer now at this point because we are rejuicing all the pulp here. So I think we're done. So I want you guys to look at this seriously. I rejuiced the pulp. Now we got about an extra eight ounces of juice rejuicing the pulp in this machine. Now I want to show you guys by pouring this the thickness of this juice. This juice is extremely thick. If you ever had like a nectar, like a Kern's nectar, that's the thickness of this juice the second time through because the slow juicer, it's not optimal to be rejuicing pulp like this, but it will it can work, although it might also back up on you but it will create a lot thicker juice because we're 
it's really hard for the juice to literally wring out the soft pulp of something like the pears or apples more. Mm. Drinking this, it's actually more like eating an apple sauce. <laughs> but look, we turn that pulp into this really um, drier, like oxidized pulp. So once again, this is the pulp that we put back through from the Nutra uh, Bullet Juicer. And if we take out the pulp, some of the pulp on the bottom, you know, that came out of the juice originally, you can see it's a lot more, a little bit more lighter in color, not quite as oxidized. So that's pretty much the test and the demo that I want to share with you guys today. What did you guys think? Post your comments down below on the results of juicing in the Nutribullet juicer. Of course, this one is fast. You cannot beat a high-speed juicer for the fastness of the juice. Although, if quality is more important than the speed and you don't mind spending an extra four minutes for juicing, you can get a considerably higher yield because if we removed all the air from the juice, I guarantee you this juice would have yielded more because there's a lot of fluff. I mean, my nephew said it tasted like cotton candy because it's that fluffy. Also, the flavor is simply not there. So if you have kids that are finicky and want things that taste better, then a slow juicer would be a better bet for you as well. And the other thing I didn't mention is actually the Shine Juicer has a three-year warranty, which is three times longer than the Nutribullet Juicer that has a short one-year warranty. To me, something like the Nutribullet with a one-year warranty is literally a disposable juicer that if it breaks, you basically could just chuck it and buy a new one. I want you guys to be juicers for a life. You know, and the Shine is our entry level model with the three year warranty, but most of the other slow juicers we sell are the high end slow juicers that have a 10 or even 15 year warranty. So in the long run, in my opinion, that's going to serve you a lot better by getting a good quality juicer the first time. And my grandfather told me the right tool for the right job. And simply for me, a slow juicer is a much better tool for the job than a high speed juicer, especially if nutrient quality and taste and yield is important to you. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna have to declare the winner of this video, the Shine Juicer, because it made a higher quality juice that tasted better. My nephew liked it better in the end, and I just like that this one is quiet and did a significantly better job at grinding up all the pulp and extracting the nutrients because simply that's why I juice. I juice for the benefits the juice could give me and the benefits are coming directly out of the fruits and vegetables and the more effective your juicer is, is at extracting those nutrients while keeping them intact because you're not oxidizing them, um, you know, the greater health benefit for you and that you will get in the long run, in my personal opinion, and based on some science, published science that I have seen. If you guys are interested in buying the Shine Juicer, please check in the description for the link below. Also, the first uh, comment under this video will be pinned. It'll be a link to the Shine Juicer if you're considering that juicer. Also, if you are looking for a higher end juicer instead of the Shine, be sure to check my other videos. I have videos comparing the Shine to more expensive juicers so you guys could learn the differences and more importantly, find the best juicer for you. I have over 500 videos on this channel. If you appreciate my no-nonsense videos where I show what actually happens when you juice the same produce in two different juicers, comparing them, please support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to make these educational videos to teach you guys about juicers, to give you guys a truth about comparing one juicer against another so you can see what the best juicer out there is for you without having to buy it and not be happy and then return it. I want to prevent returns from happening because it just costs everybody extra money and time and it's a very inefficient way of doing business. But by my videos, I feel you can get the right information at the right time and with the right information, you can be empowered to make your own choice at least when buying a juicer and I wish we had my videos for many other different products and even you know things in the world where we actually just were told the truth and let you guys decide 
what you want to do. So thank you in advance for those of you guys that will support me. And I want to thank you guys who have supported me in the past. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this video with others that may be considering the Nutribullet juicer so you guys can see the pros and the cons of this machine as well as a good alternative. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so don't miss it on my new upcoming episodes that come out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you will be learning on my YouTube channel or what new juicers I'll com be comparing so you guys could buy the right juicer for you. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time comparing all the different major brand juicers so that you guys could find the right juicer for you and your family's needs so that you become juicers for life. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.